Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeannie. Always nice to hear from Hidisang as well. And hey guys, welcome to PGL. I'm Laure, joined by Aragon, and Pad, and Karzi. How are you guys doing? We are doing great. We just won a match. Yeah? So you feel good usually after winning a match. But I have one question about this, though, because when you think of the draft, you guys now have time to do the draft backstage. For me, you have time to think of the draft, think of your choices. When you give Hidisang Camille, you know exactly what you did. Actually, you don't know what you did. Is it going to go 0-10? Is it going to go 10-0? How did you feel after he locked that champion? And what was the reasoning behind this? I mean, I was happy. Wait, you're asking me? I asked both of you, but okay. you have the mic in front of you, so let's just but go. For me, <laughs> I was happy because we had some practice of this exact matchup. Like, we played Twisted Fate Camel before. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. In most of the games, we don't really do our specialty in this one. But usually it's like really annoying for the enemy team to play after six if you're good in the game. Yeah, quite cool. painful indeed. And it's, I mean, this action started off quite early as well with uh, mm -hmm. some invades. Yeah. Bad you we had. Yeah, go we ahead. were in uh, Champ Select and we were like, they're going to late invade, they're going to abuse Halo Blades. Uh, they've been watching LPL for sure. Oh, that's where <laughs> I saw it. And exactly what you did, right? Yep, that's exactly what we did. And I think the time that you get after draft to discuss it, I actually think that we've like as a team, both coaching staff and players have come together really, really nicely. And mm -hmm. I think we've had such good early game plans. And I think it's especially in this game, I think we generated a 1K gold lead by minute four in this game, which was just like, it's just huge. I still think that, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I, for me, Kami support is not going to be a conventional pick. And I love the fact that you guys take some risks. Would you define this as a draft risk? Or is it you having like a better middle read and actually feeling comfortable in champions like this? Maybe more a question for the coaching staff here. I think it's being willing to break the meta or yeah. like sort of like establish it yourself first. It doesn't mean that, you know, us playing Camille now that every team has to play it. But I think one of the things that we that I have had an issue with in the past for, for my for my teams has been that we are waiting for LCK to show us the way. Um, and I think that with this team, like we saw it today and we've seen it in our last two red side games as well that mm -hmm. we're just we're just willing to break the meta and i think that especially on red side that's really important he is saying good player of the game here Karzi. anything you want to say about his performance or him as a player because when we talk about he saying coming in today we were like that's great he refrained the urges that he had to go maybe too forward sometimes is that a sentiment that you share well i think he played really really well this yeah. game he was very decisive and he was leading the team with uh, his comms because he was letting us know exactly what he wants to do and how strong is he. So we had to follow him, you know, otherwise if you don't follow him, he's going to run it down. Yeah. So <laughs> we have to help him a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I am I was just happy he picked it, you know. I'm always happy when Hillisang picks something like this. Yeah. When we played the Senna last split as well because people don't expect him to play champs like this and it always makes me happy when he proves them wrong. Mm. Yeah. It, it does feel like a champion that is one where he can go 0-20 with all the soft contesting he does, with there all like the playing on the edge. Is this something you bear in mind or do you just have full faith that he's going to... Mm, I mean, there's always going to be a risk element to having Healy on these sort of champions, right? Yeah. But in the, in the end of the day, like our goal as a team working towards summer finals and, and worlds is to make sure that when Healy is going in, that people are either following and we are murdering them, mm. or that we have pressure on the other side of the map and he's slowing down the team. Because I think this narrative of Healy running it, uninting it, is, is a bit boring at this yeah. point. Yeah, I agree. Because honestly, Healy just sees a lot of openings that other players in LEC does not see. But that's the thing, I agree fully with you on this. And for me, it's his creative genius that carries him away a bit too much sometimes. So as a coach, <laughs> what, is, what is the best approach and what is the most difficult one? To ask Healy to put, to put a leash on him and maybe tell him to not go for this potentially great and amazing plays or teaching the rest of the team that you should follow him because he sees stuff that you don't and this is what's going to win you guys games. So I think it's really important that whenever we have these sequences in officials or in scrims that we review them together to, to see what he sees. Yeah. Um, but it's also really important that he learns how to communicate what he's seeing ahead of time. And it's really important that when Kasi is playing TF and he's calling aggressively for ult on side or gold cards, that, that then he can go and follow their call as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a give and take relationship. And whenever Hilly is, is giving back, well, they're much more willing to give. Yeah. So I have a question. I've kind of prepared it because I was really excited to actually have you on today because I don't know if you know this, Kazi, but I was coached by Pad. I was on a team with him right back in the oh, ERLs. Wow. Um, so 
I wanted to ask how Pad's coaching has evolved. And I have a couple quotes that he would say very often in coaching, like his little catchphrases Ooh. about macro. Um, so the first one, whenever we made a play and he was in review with us, he would often say, take the hand, not the arm, or take the finger, not the whole arm. Did he ever say that anymore? Or is that something he's moved away from? I mean, he says like similar st stuff to this, but I cannot talk <laughs> like, on, on the screen. Is it not broadcastable? Ah! It's not broadcastable, I'm sorry. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I like the way you coach that. <laughs> and next, next I one. will investigate off cam for you guys and let you know. <laughs> wave, vision, wave, play is another one that he would say very, very often in terms of side laning. Uh, you push in a wave, you go get vision, and you come back, make a uh, play on the next wave. Is that something he dropped it all together? He dropped this as well. I've never heard him <laughs> say anything like this before. <laughs> oh my. I mean, Mitz, that you refined your coaching maybe over the years. And Certainly. the catchphrases or maybe the advice that you give your players, because I feel like there's like systematic mistakes that all the players are going to make. But maybe if you have other I don't know, focuses for vitality. What, what is the advice that you hammer down? One that you can say on broadcast, please. Like my biggest them. advice is usually to my ADCs, because like I work a lot <laughs> oh, with go. them. And <laughs> usually what I tell them is like, why are you going melee? Can you stop going melee? <laughs> That's that's my best advice. I do this maybe once a scrim. <laughs> once a scrim? Oh my god. <laughs> Carzi? No. no. <laughs> he, they are very toxic towards me and the team. And it's been really hard because I've yeah. been trying my best, but my mm. coaching staff just doesn't like me anymore. I know. I mean, he's even calling you out when you're in game. <laughs> I, I mean, there's a tweet addressing this, actually. It was outrageous. You're doing your best. You're sweating. You're the one sweating on the rift. Yeah. And this coach has the audacity to tell you what you should build. Let him play next time. Yeah, I mean, the worst part is that, <laughs> like, if it was at least right, you know, but he was so wrong, oh, no. that's what triggers me. Because All he right. didn't even see the reasoning behind, like, why you were melee. Why I was melee. Yeah. And that's, that's my bad. I turned 30 this year. And my eyesight is failing me. Yeah. Mm. So You're making us all look bad here when so you say this. <laughs> unfortunately, that's what happened. And I've apologized to him. I've been on my knees. I've scraped <laughs> his boots. I've done everything I can. And maybe one day he will forgive me for this insolent moment. Do you guys, uh, what is your relationship, actually, uh, coach and, uh, and AD? Because I know that there's, uh, there, no, but there's a lot of coaches with Vitality. So what is the bond between the two of you? Do you guys work together? Because, Pat, I know that you work with the VTO, ah. for instance. Or oh, if you want to say more, I'm, I'm oh. down. But <laughs> that's not what I was going for. I don't have any coaches since I'm like... Uh, You're the goat. The goat. Yeah. I don't need any help from anyone, so I'm, I'm just doing my own stuff. And we are just chilling together while he's coaching and flaming the other players. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy that you can fit in a room with five other players, given the ego <laughs> that you have now. <laughs> 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 but I appreciate the confidence, though. And I think that's also something you need to target, working with a team. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Like, not, like having, uh, I'm, I work the most with Vincent and Douglas yeah. uh, in the team, so I don't get to spend that much individual time with Kasi. We, like, obviously, we do like, overall team reviews and stuff like this and presentations. Um, but having a bot lane that sort of like holds each other to really high standards yeah. it mm. is really important because we don't have a, a big enough staff to have positional coaches for everyone this year. So mm. they're just smurfing it. Uh, I'd love to know, actually, because I've never asked you this before, but like you jumped from the... Uh, I remember when you went from the NLC to the LEC, right? And I feel like um, it's obviously going to be a huge jump, but what are some of the biggest things that you had to overcome, you know, to adapt to it? Because now I believe you're uh, almost up there like in terms of top tier coach in the EU. Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest things were when you come from NLC, like Scandinavian League, which is my home, and I come from UK League of Legends, shout out. Um, <laughs> the biggest thing is that I had actually done zero positional coaching before I got to LEC. Yeah. So developing my like my skill set in that area was something that uh, was like took some time, but I missed a lot of time doing that outside of work hours as well. I worked a lot with teams in Brazil and Latin America to make sure that I stay sharp on that, and I would say that now my favorite thing is positional coaching. I, I, I just really Amazing. like it. Um, so, so that that was the biggest thing, uh, and then obviously like going from you know like Scandinavian League of Legends macro to LEC. It's it's a pretty different world. Must uh, be a bit different, yeah. But ERL and LEC tend to be different in that uh, in that aspect. But when I think of vitality, I see I see the progress from winter to spring, and I don't know if you agree on this, Aragon. But I know that something they've been talking about since the beginning of the year when you heard the coaching staff is this is going to take some time. 
We're not aiming for consistent split. Of course, they would love it, uh, obviously, but they're aiming at the end of the season, and this is when you want to peak, I think. But where yeah. do you see the progress on Vitality so far? Because uh, I they definitely think. Again. Yeah, I definitely think it's a big improvement from last split. Um, I do see some uh, some shaky things. I don't know if you, uh, Pad, you agree, but every time this team is around Baron, oh, no. they have a lead. Yeah and they get picked or something, in like face checking a bush, even though they don't need to. Do you, do you lose any gray hairs, you know, gain any gray hairs thinking about that? I mean, I signed up to play with Cassie for my third year now. Oh, yeah. Oh. Third, third. So, uh, like, it comes with the job. Huh? Yeah. Like, <laughs> having Cassie on your team, huh? it will develop gray hairs. But it's also a cost that I will, like, mm. it's a price I will always pay because it means that I have an ADC who's willing to hit when you are a minute 40 in a game deciding fight versus that one in game five uh, yeah. at Worlds or versus T1 when we go there. And, and I'd much rather have a player who's willing to, to make a game winning play than a person who doesn't hit because he doesn't want to look bad. Yeah, I actually love to build on this because last split, I want your thoughts, Kazi, on the fact that you had the lowest KDA in terms of AD carries, <laughs> but you had the highest DPM. That's a top laner KDA. Base. I want to know why and how you think your gameplay impacts and affects that, uh, creates that situation. I mean, I don't care trading myself, you know, for yeah. the kill, if it's worth it. So if there is someone like more important than me, I would just die, so he dies. But I love no, it. Like, I just like to hit and test limits a lot. And I don't mind dying because for me, even if you die, it doesn't like matter, you know, because the game is still winnable. No matter how many times I die, I feel like the game is still winnable. Selfless player. Uncharacteristic of AD carries, yeah. I want to say, but I do love the approach. Let's take a look at the standings, shall we? Maybe because with this win, you're lucky in playoffs once again. But is it the same vitality that we saw in spring? And uh, I want to ask you guys this time, in this slow building process, what is the major difference compared to the form you had in winter, Karzy, as a team? For me, we made a lot of progress in the mid game and like playing with sideline, so it's a lot easier for us to um, finish the games, let's yeah. say. And also like we worked on our early game a bit and I uh, think we are getting advantages pretty consistently right now. So that helps as well a lot. We just have a little bit of issues in the minute 10 to 20. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but after that we are Good to go right now. I think only G2 and Fnatic have better macro than us at that point. Ed, you seem to agree here. Anything you want to add? No, I, I agree. Progress? I think I think I'm s like we came out of winter split and we finished what sixth, fifth, sixth, and the whole sort of takeaway was that we were just ready to grind on into spring. Mm -hmm. Like in the face of adversity, everyone wanted to learn more. No one was like sulking or being upset at anyone. We we're just ready to take the next step. And I think that the, the practice has been really, really good. And it's, it's showing. Like this game, it showed a lot. It is showing. I, is it showing for the for the other team that qualified, though? Heragon here, Heretics. We talked to uh, mm. Zviru earlier. Uh, great energy on yeah. the desk, by the way. But yeah, this team, Heretics, leading into playoffs this time, again, is clearly not the same one we had in winter. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely a surprise. The decisiveness coming out from Trimby, I've seen on champions like Nautilus and then Zviru, and yeah. using him. Um, now actually not just on Nico and Karma type chance, but also on Oriana playing playing through Yankos too. I think it's been fantastic. Yeah, so really big improvement and a huge surprise. I'm actually questioning the level of the league overall because I feel like during week one and week two, I was ob objectively not optimistic. I was like, it <laughs> looks like team got worse. And I was wondering why. And I'm actually wondering if it's going to be the same kind of story leading into playoffs. How do you rank the league right now when you look at teams in winter and how they developed in spring? Karzi, do you feel like the league got stronger overall? I mean, honestly, I feel like it's been pretty bad these last two <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think that except for G2, we are all kind of bad. So, but yeah. That's, yeah. I hope it gets better. Yeah, I do <laughs> hope it gets better. We have MSI in a month and a half and Worlds in Europe at the end of the year. So, yeah, hopefully it gets better. But uh, is there like a, I, I don't know, how, how do you explain this? If you can explain this, the um, fact that it feels like there's this, this locomotive that is G2 and you will have teams, but they don't say stay consistently good throughout the entirety of the year. And I have a hard time understanding why. So I think it comes down to a lot of things. And I think that in general, in League of Legends, we are a bit short-sighted in terms of like when teams are supposed to be good or when they are supposed to look good. And I would say like the only team 
that I'm really surprised isn't doing better, even though they're ramping up now, BDS. Yeah. Um, because I don't think that we should be surprised that G2, Fnatic and BDS, the teams who kept the majority of their rosters, minus SK, who are who hasn't developed as much as I would have liked to see. But I think that's super normal because they played together like last year. I think Fnatic mm -hmm. make, made one change to support, right? This year, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think that by the end of this year, like if if teams are, you know, using G2 to propel themselves forward and if you keep having good like practice and your your process focused and not focused on winning split or coming top two in, in, in winter, then, you know, we'll see teams be good by the end of the year uh, or by the end of summer. But uh, yeah, uh, the, right now, I would say the quality of, of the league, like including us, is not like, you know, we're not ready to to take uh, yeah. over and i think acknowledging it is good and you guys are working towards this success obviously so yeah let's take let, let's take a, a date in summer with vitality and see where we uh leave things i want to take a look at the uh, schedule quickly because we don't have a match of the week tomorrow guys but still race for playoffs with two spots left aragon one match that you want to keep your eyes on today Ooh, i think uh taking a look at well, this is quite tricky, actually. SK Fnatic is interesting. That's the first one day. I'm actually going to be casting that one. And they're the closest in the standing, so probably that one. But BDS uh, uh, Mad Lions is also interesting in terms of skill. Mm -hmm. Guys, you face off against GX tomorrow. One against Rogue today. Any expectations for this match? Mm. OK, I will take <laughs> I will take the, the shoulders. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, they really need to win, so. Oh, they really need to win. They yeah. really need yeah, to win, yeah, yeah. so I expect them to come very well prepared. Okay. And it might be a cooking game for us. Cooking game Ooh. for you guys. Yeah. We might have to cook. We saw Patrick pull out the Nyla in the series today. So I imagine they have to keep re-innovating themselves because it's looked a bit slow for them to mm -hmm. split. Like, uh, but I think they got a good win today. But for tomorrow, I think, I think we're good. No. The bees stay strong. Guys, thank you so much for thank this you. PGL. Amazing always to have you guys. And same can be said about you, Aragon. Lovely doing PGL with you. And that's all for us here tonight for the LEC today. Four teams are now locked in playoff. And let's see which teams will follow tomorrow. But for now, tune in to the LCS playoff where Team Liquid is facing 100 Thieves and Appa is typing in all chats. <laughs> that was great, though. Yeah. I want to break chat. down a fight from last week's Team Liquid versus FlyQuest series. Now, this was 16 minutes into Game 3. As you can see, APA will be the star of this clip. You just don't know why yet. He is currently 0, 0, and 0. Watch him in this fight. There's going to be something that uh, is very important to the overall theme of this series, and most importantly, this next series that we're gonna be seeing. So you can see APA very clearly on the Nico, doesn't pick up any kills, but clearly was instrumental into Team Liquid winning this fight. But the important thing I think from this entire sequence is right here. So notice how he's taken his hand off of the mouse. He has positioned his left hand still where his WASD would be, but able to type. And he does, if you focus in right into this box right here, very small chat window. Doesn't want to make a distraction, but does want to make a distraction for the other team. So he types two things. Wow, the ego. If we pay attention, he does this very quickly. You can't quite see it on this screen, but I'm at 35 seconds into this clip when he removes his hand from the mouse. By the time he finishes typing, only three seconds have passed. So ultimately, not a distraction for APA, but very potentially a distraction for the enemy team. Now, did this lead to a Team Liquid win in this game? No. Did they win the series? No. But he's not going to stop. He's going to keep typing in this 100 Thieves series, which, by the way, happens now. We can do it! Oh, oh knock up! Knock back! First blood of the coming through immediately! There it is, baby! Latest of the split, and it feels good! 18 minutes! Lulu is far, Lulu is far. Zeri, 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 Zeri. Look at Zeri, 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 Zeri. I'm on HP, I'm on HP. I know, Zeri no flash. I need help as well, I need help. I have to just hit from this, I have nobody else. Yeah, yeah. Vivian, Vivian. Nice. Just like that. 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 I'm sorry, Patrick, but. I never get it. Good up for damage from Jay. Gets full combo and flash over from Razor. Jay just fishing for this one v one. Karma not gonna be able to get there in time. Oh, will bring her back. Jay already flashed away. Razor already flashed away. Gas for oh. That was clean as hell from Jay. 
White might start early, I mean irrelevant, maybe not. Pop Blossom is a one-man quickness yet again. The tack above there, Han Summer catches in though! Look at the money! Oh, you always been patient here though. I'm not sure what the ward coverage is like, but Tyra has walked out once again. Counter-Strike flight, amazing gank! Holy moly, El Yoyo! So hard though, you kind of need to get this. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Flash away. Oh, the Ooh, jump! Nice oh, both jumpers right now. I think can deadlift 150 kilo plus. Okay, it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. 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 Um, no, 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 Back up, drag a stick in two. This is way out as Photon goes over the wall, but meanwhile, Target tries to get the rest of the fight. The depth charge there. Hilly about to dive it with his dying breath. An ultimatum flies through a shockwave there. And now, as he comes through, the Void Rush flies on the Exit Kick's face, but he's not taking damage. He's not taking any damage. Exit Kick says, Get this guy off me. Get him off me, Dagda. Oh my god. That's a wreck set for you, baby. Referee. Referee. The Rex side, baby! <laughs>